Wisconsin Eyes Campaign 2024 programming is sponsored by Wisconsin Counties Association, Nicolay National Bank, Wisconsin Hospital Association, Operating Engineers Local 139, the Wisconsin Realtors Association, the Wisconsin Laborers District Council, and North Central States Regional Council of Carpenters. To support programs like this, please consider a tax-deductible donation at wisi.org slash donate or by texting WISI to 44321. Representative Robin Vining of Wauwatosa is the Democratic candidate for the 13th Assembly District. The election is November 5th. Representative Vining, welcome back to Wisconsin Eye. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for participating in our candidate interviews. I'll start by asking you, what's your campaign, campaign's key message? Why are you running for re-election to the Assembly? I'm running for re-election for the love of Wisconsin, uh, for the love of our people, for what we care about, for the values we hold so deeply. Um, things like affordable child care, accessible health care, um, uh, safe, healthy communities, great schools, accessible communities, um, uh, communities free from gun violence. Um, the world that we all want to see. And for the last six years, I have fought for families as if they're my own, and I am running to fight for families as if they're my own. So if you're reelected, what's an example of a bill that would be a priority for you to introduce? So right out of the gate, postpartum agreement, postpartum Medicaid expansion or I'm sorry, bipartisan agreement on postpartum Medicaid expansion. So crediting my colleague, Representative Donna Rosar, Republican who led the way on postpartum Medicaid expansion, we built the bipartisan consensus. It passed the Senate 32 to 1. Uh, the governor has said he, sign it. We need, he would sign it. We need 50 votes in the state assembly. We have 66 co-sponsors, so we know we have the votes. But un unfortunately, that bill has been held up by the speaker. Um, so we know that uh, the majority of of postpartum deaths take place between 60 days and a year postpartum. We know, and that is the time period that we're trying to expand the health care coverage. We know the majority of those deaths are mental health related deaths. So we know these, we, we know we can do something about it. We are one of only two states in the country that hasn't passed postpartum Medicaid expansion. So right out of the gate, we know we need to do that. I'm going to give you more than one. Um, the Save Our Schools bill, because we know that our public schools statewide are in crisis. They're in financial crisis. We're seeing referendums across the state. I wrote the Save Our Schools bill to try and get us back on track and this end this cycle of referendums. Uh, that bill has, uh, it, it puts uh, special ed reimbursement at 90%, it indexes per pupil, funding to inflation, and then it provides grants to get more qualified teachers in the classroom. I would tag on to that my mental health care is health care package, which is 10 bills on mental health, um, and that relates to everybody, um, veterans, adults, um, uh, college students, but also high school students, K-12 um, children. And, um, and so I would start there. Then I'm also going to say we need to pass, we need to pass fair maps. We need nonpartisan uh, redistricting reform so that we aren't looking at competitive maps just once, but for the future of Wisconsin. And I could probably go on, but I know I probably <laughs> Well, I'll should. give you more opportunity. <laughs> so perhaps you've already answered this, but you know there is a more than $3 billion projected budget surplus. What's, yep. what's your top two priorities for use of the surplus funding? Yep. So we know that public education is a massive economic engine. And I think that when we look at investing tax dollars, we should look at where they're well invested. I think that if uh, public education is an economic engine, we should fuel the engine. So we should fuel the engine and fund public education. We should fund K-12. We should look at 90% reimbursement uh, for special ed. And then we should also look at the UW system. We should look at things like capital investments that would be a one-time thing, like, for example, uh, conversations that we're having at UW-Milwaukee, the Health Sciences Building. We need renovations there. We need to look at crumbling infrastructure across the UW system. What buildings do we need to do work on? So one time. Then we also need to consider that when we 
put those projects off, they become more expensive. So things like um, UW-Milwaukee is looking at plans, getting the plans approved, which there's a cost attached to that for the engineering and neuroscience building. The sooner we do the work on the plans, the sooner we can then talk about construction. The longer we put that off, the more it costs taxpayers to do it in the long run. So I would say um, public ed, fund, fund, the, fund, fund public education, um, fuel the economic engine, that was the first one. Um, and then uh, if I'm only picking two, uh, then I would say uh, child care counts, extend child care counts. We know that we have, um, we're, we're facing a child care cliff, people are not Childcare is unaffordable. We also know the workers aren't being paid enough. Um, they're not being paid their, uh, their worth. So to ensure that our workforce can go to work, um, we know that we need child care. We need better child care access. I would also say we need to talk about mental health, but I know we'll get, we have too. a mental health question. <laughs> uh, what about tax cuts, tax reform? Is that part of your platform? Sure. So I'm open to a middle class tax cut. Um, one of the things I do in the legislature is try and figure out are there unique solutions that we haven't discussed yet. So um, I'm not ready to talk about it yet. I don't want to break news in my WSI interview. Um, but um, I'm curious um, about additional child care related tax cuts, tax credits. Curious, we're doing some work trying to figure it out, come up with some new ideas. Um, and I'm also curious if there's something that we can do because of these referendums for school funding that are passing statewide, where we're forcing communities to raise their property, they're raising their own taxes. Um, and that is going up significantly. In Wauwatosa, people with a $350,000 home are looking at their taxes going up about $750 um, a year. That's a huge amount of money. So I'm trying to figure out, is there something, is there a way we can engage with um, the communities that have been forced to raise their own taxes to keep their schools operating? I don't have the answers yet, but it is something that I am thinking about right now. So you've talked about your K-12 education priority, and you touched on a priority in funding higher education. I want to get a better sense from you on what do you think the future does and should look like for the state's higher education system of four-year colleges, two-year colleges, technical colleges? Where should the legislature be focusing? Well, we should first of all understand that um, we do have control over what the future looks like when we when we fund the UW system, it does well. Um, we shouldn't be surprised when we starve the UW system and it falters. Um, and so I think looking forward, knowing that we have a 23 to 1 ROI when we fund the UW system, the return on an investment is 23 to 1. That's a significant taxpayer investment. So looking at the future, um, we know that uh, as we have uh, UW campuses around the state, they serve as like self-sustaining communities um, and or economies within communities. And so when we fund the UW system, we're funding um, economies around the state, local economies around the state. Um, so I think, uh, I mean, I mentioned it, the health science building in, in Milwaukee, um, we need to look at crumbling infrastructure. Where do we need to invest in those buildings? We need to consider uh, when we put off uh, capital investments that they cost more in the long run. Um, so so um, looking at the UW system. And fully, sure, fully fund that fully UW system. Fully fund the UW request. system and make sure our professors are being paid adequately, that our staff is being paid adequately um, that, so that we can keep them in Wisconsin and really, I would say, restore, like, or I, I wouldn't say restore. I would say um, Wisconsin has a long history where our, public, our, our higher education has been a crown jewel um, in the country. And let's treat it that way so that in the future it continues to be just that. What's the state's largest workforce development challenge and how would you address it? Child care. Child care access. Um, we know that people can't work if they, can't, if they don't have child care. Uh, we know that women are disproportionately affected by lack of child care access. It's keeping women out of their careers. It's keeping women from being able to go to work. It's keeping everybody from being able to go to work. It's not just women, but it does disproportionately affect women. Um, our child care workers, on average, from what I understand, are being paid about $13, $14 an hour compared to maybe a high school student who could make $17, $18, $19 at Quick Trip. Um, um, that seems like we're not investing in child care workers, which is affecting uh, how many child care classrooms we have statewide. So is the solution child care counts funding? I think it includes child care counts, um, but we, we definitely have to address child care. 
Yeah. Um, investments in public and energy infrastructure grow our state's economy. This also provides an opportunity to invest in our state's workforce, but currently there are no requirements for hiring local workers. Would you support a state resident hiring requirement for state, local, and utility scale infrastructure investments? Well, I'd want to look at it. I'd want to look at any proposal before I commit to it. Um, but I do think it is fair to consider that we invest Wisconsin dollars in Wisconsin workers, which supports the Wisconsin economy. I think that's fair. Employee classification is an issue in the construction industry. Some employers misclassify workers as independent contractors or pay them in cash off the books. This lowers costs by avoiding payroll taxes and unemployment insurance, and it puts compliant companies at a disadvantage when bidding on projects. Plus, misclassified workers may be denied minimum wage protections or overtime pay. Are you aware of the issue, and what do you think should be done about it? I've got a short answer for you this time. I'm aware of the issue. I'm a co-sponsor of the bill. <laughs> it needs to be fixed. In what way? I'm sure. I'm, I mean, well, when companies don't follow the rules, they should be held accountable. And I think we also need to talk about that who we are as a state. We have a long history of honoring workers, and we need to get back to that. Affordable rental housing is an issue in Wisconsin. Some support government-imposed rent control to maintain affordability, while others argue keeping rent artificially low will decrease rental supply, resulting in increased prices. What is your sense of housing as an issue, and which best addresses rental housing affordability? Is it rent control, building more rentals, or some other solution? So it's a huge, we know that affordable housing is a huge issue. Uh, senior housing, workforce housing, affordable housing, um, inventory, making sure that we have enough housing Housing. Um, and then making sure that the housing that we have, people can afford to live in it. Um, it's become so difficult for people to afford a place to live and childcare. Um, that combination is, is incredibly difficult. Um, I want to look at proposals as far as whether or not um, you we're looking at rent control. We know we need more inventory. We also know that we passed $500 million in a housing package this legislative session. That's good momentum. Um, let's look at, at the work that we did, how effective it was, um, and then lastly, I would, and, and then decide what we need to do next. Um, in the meantime, we should have everybody at the table. We should have every stakeholder willing to come to the table and talk about what needs to be done because we know this, we know affordable housing is. It's not just an issue, it's a crisis. And it is ever present in so many people's minds. Um, so whether it's seniors or young people or everybody in between. Um, and yeah, and when we look at workforce, we know that there are, there's a relationship between uh, workforce and affordable housing. So um, yep, it's a significant problem. We gotta get to work. Medical systems are facing numerous headwinds in the form of inflation, workforce development, and issues around Medicare and Medicaid reimbursement, resulting in few, fewer services and even the closure of a hospital system in western Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. What would you do to preserve access to care and prevent future closures? Expand Medicaid. We're one of only nine states nationwide that have an expanded Medicaid. It comes with billions of dollars. We've left billions of dollars on the table. Um, we have to invest in health care. Um, unfortunately, partisanship has gotten in the way of that in Madison. Um, that needs to end, and we've got to invest in health care. Um, yeah. Do you support increasing the Medicaid reimbursement rate to hospitals? Yes, and I think I re what, what I really wish right now is we are having a conversation about which reimbursement rates we were increasing instead of whether or not we're expanding Medicaid. We should expand Medicaid. Let's get to the next round of conversations. You mentioned mental health care as a priority for you. Uh, what are you hearing about in, on this issue in your district and what are some solutions? First of all, I'm so glad that we're talking about this. I'm so glad that you're asking this question. Um, I serve as the ranking member on the Committee on Mental Health. I asked to serve in that position because I consider this one of the most significant issues facing Wisconsinites, Wisconsinites of every age, of every demographic. Um, when I asked in my legislative survey this year, uh, on a scale of one to 10, how significant do you think the mental health issue is to Wisconsinites? Uh, we're landing in the seven to 10 range for almost everybody who answered me. Um, I wrote a package of bills called the Mental Health Care is Health Care Package. First of all, we call it that because we want to destigmatize access to mental health care. Um, and we wrote the package because we believe that every Wisconsinite deserves access to the mental health care that they need. So as far as mental health access, we need, um, we know we need to make sure that kids have access. Uh, social emotional learning skills um, and um, programs in schools, they affect kids' abilities to learn. Um, it affects behavior. Um, it affects outcomes. These are good things. Um, 
We know we need to increase the mental health professional workforce. We need more mental health professionals. Um, we want to increase diversity in the workforce. I believe that diverse, diverse student populations in schools do, deserve diverse uh, mental health professional um, workers in their schools. And um, so I've written um, 10 bills, uh, veterans, college students, uh, in, um, requiring health insurance to cover mental health visits. Um, and so this is a significant package of legislation that I've written because I think it's a significant issue f facing Wisconsinites and something that we have to act on now. How should Wisconsin move forward on the issue of abortion? We should trust women to make their own health care decisions. We should keep government out of doctor's offices. Any limits, a week, number of weeks that should be a limit? Uh, I'm not a medical professional, and I trust doctors to make those decisions. What are the pressing transportation needs in your district, and how important is it that these needs are addressed and for the state to keep on schedule with the reconstruction of our aging interstates and significant corridors of commerce? This is a time that I think we need to talk about what the state has done to strangle local municipalities and to make it difficult for them to afford to provide what their municipalities need, what their people that they serve need. Um, we know that they are being asked to do so much with so little. And, um, and it affects different municipalities in different ways. Um, I've been meeting for the state budget for next year. I've been meeting with uh, leaders in the, all three, uh, the village of Elm Grove, the city of Brookfield, and the city of Wauwatosa uh, to prepare. I can tell you that it's different in each, each area, and there's some overlap. But something unique to Brookfield is there's a roundabout that has grasses so tall that it's probably dangerous. Um, but that it costs money to cut grasses. Um, uh, Elm Grove, uh, from what I understand, was given a bad quote on how long their roads would last. Um, and they got that quote from, my understanding is, the state of Wisconsin. Uh, the roads are needing repair decades sooner. They weren't, they weren't expecting that. And because the, they have no, so little margin because of how we've strangled municipalities' budgets for so long, um, they're now trying to figure out how to afford this unexpected cost. Um, and in Wauwatosa, reckless driving. We know that this affects many communities, but it is, it is significant in Wauwatosa. So how can the city, when it's faced with this issue, respond? Um, those are all transportation issues, right? Um, and then I think it is also worth noting that when we cut transit funding, um, we cut people's ability to get to work because we end up cutting bus routes. Um, so they can't get to work, they can't get to doctor's appointments, they can't get to the things that they need to get to in life. So when we cut, when we cut um, transit funding, then we cut people's ability to get to work, and then we wonder what we're doing um, on workforce. Uh, there's a tie there. So, PFAS and other water contaminants are a growing concern for Wisconsinites. Do you see this as an important issue, and how would you address it? Well, I'm very honored and um, proud of my 100% score from this legislative session from the Wisconsin conservation voters. I do believe that everybody has a right to clean drinking water. Um, and it is government's job to ensure that right. So yes, we should engage on this issue. We should ensure that people have access to clean drinking water. Um, we have short-term problems like figuring out what's wrong um, and correcting it, and then and then looking at long-term, making sure that we're doing what it takes to ensure that. What should the water. legislature do more specifically? Is well, we should stop fighting in Madison about PFAS, and um, Joint Finance has got to get themselves together and um, release monies. Um, and so, partisanship should not be getting in the way of people having access to clean drinking water. We're down to the final two questions. All right. How would you describe the leading differences between you and your opponent? <laughs> um, well, I would imagine that if you're somebody who's received a mailer recently paid for by the Republican Party of Wisconsin, um, who is there are rebranding my opponent to seem like he might be pretty similar to me. Um, and so I would imagine that it would be tricky to sort through those differences. Um, but I have a long record um, and have been trusted on issues like 
childcare and paid leave and mental health and school funding and women's health, um, infant health, child health. Um, and it's really been an honor to serve these last six years and to develop legislation in those areas, support legislation in those areas and really fight for families as if they're my own in those areas. Um, and then I do think it is also important to differentiate. Um, my opponent uh, has co-sponsored two abortion bans in nine months. And I support women to make their health care decisions, doctors to, to give the advice that they believe is medically necessary, and, um, and keeping the government out. I support reproductive freedom. Um, my opponent has made very clear that he does not. Final question. Let's say you're reelected to the assembly and you get a magic wand you can use in the state capitol in a way that resolves an issue and brings all parties together at the same time. What is the issue? Well, um, so back in 2011, um, when Act 10 was happening, um, we went to the capitol to protest. Um, it was an attack on workers. It was an attack on public school funding. But at the end of the day, um, there's two things happening. There's the content, so what, what we do, what people do in Madison, what policymakers do. There's also how we do it. And, um, and so um, I disagreed with the policy decisions being made, but I also disagreed with the divide and conquer politics or tactics um, being used to do it. Um, and so when we protested in Madison in 2011, um, I carried a sign that said love wins. Um, we have gotten into this atmosphere in, in politics where fear is used. Um, I mean, well, it's used to scare people, but it's used to divide people. It's used to pit neighbor against neighbor, and people despise that kind of politics. So I think as leaders, there's a higher calling on us. Um, we need to know what we believe and the policies we're going to go to Madison and fight for. Um, but we also need to know how we're going to do it. Or I would say, maybe I should better say, um, when we, we can't complain about the toxicity in Madison and then go back to our districts and perpetuate it. So if I had a magic wand, um, I would inspire the legislature uh, to do a better job casting vision for the policies that you want to pass. Do it in a way that doesn't create division, um, that doesn't inflict fear on the very people you've sworn to serve. Um, and do it in a way that instead unites people on shared values. Um, fear, fear, divide and conquer politics, that is not who we are as a state. Um, and so I would love for us to get to a place where, um, as we say on my campaign trail, um, love wins. Thank you, Representative Robin Vining of Wauwatosa, the Democratic candidate for the 13th Assembly District. The election is November 5th. Representative Robin Vining, thank you for talking with Wisconsin Eye. Thank you so much. This programming is brought to you by our generous sponsors. Thank you for watching.